Hello and good afternoon. My name is Lucy Aquino and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Hispano Care, a program of Advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center. During the next 25 minutes, we're going to be discussing prostate cancer. Joining me today is Dr. Mavia Aquilu, an oncologist hematologist with Advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center. Please allow me to welcome you on the show today. Thank you. And thank you for coming back, actually, because you've been with us before. I, I, it's a pleasure to be back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. You know, Dr. Hill, it's, you know, we cannot talk enough about prostate cancer. I mean, cancer as a whole, but prostate yeah. so important. we got to make sure that our men folk actually get this message, and we cannot talk enough about it. I know that more than 2 million men in the United States count themselves as prostate cancer survivors and how many more millions don't even know that they may have prostate cancer. Absolutely. So doctor, what is prostate cancer? So I think the, the first question is just what is cancer in oh, general? What is cancer? And so cancer is just a, part, a portion of your body, a cell in your body that has all of a sudden decided that it's just going to grow and grow and grow and it doesn't care the rest of your body. And so it just it takes over. And so that's uncontrolled growth is what we call cancer. Mm -hmm. And can, that could kind of come up at any part of your body. Prostate cancer is cancer that starts off within the prostate and has a potential to spread to other areas. And even though if it spreads, we still call it prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And the problem with cancer is it doesn't care about the rest of the body. So that uncontrolled growth basically takes over the body and it's at the cost of the body that it grows. Mm -hmm. So it just, so if it, even if it spreads, it's still called prostate I, I cancer. The, the way I describe it is uh -huh. if, if you moved to England, right. you'd still be an American in, in England. And so prostate cancer, if it moves to the bones, it's not bone cancer, mm -hmm. it's still called prostate cancer. Oh, that's good to know. Um, kind of hard to describe, but it's good to, okay. <laughs> it's good to know. So doctor, can, can you inherit cancer? I mean, you know you can inherit cancer prostate cancer, all of these cancers are, anyone can inherit those, correct? It is, and you know, we're, if we look at prostate, there are many cancer syndromes that are out there. We're finding out that there's grouping of cancers within families, and people looked at that, and some of these groupings, we've identified which gene, which mm -hmm. part of the body goes abnormal that predisposes people to become, to have certain cancers. For prostate cancer, there seems to be a grouping in certain cancer syndromes, mm -hmm. BRCA being one of them, mm -hmm. that we've identified. But even more so than that, if there are groupings of prostate cancer that we see within families, but we can't seem to identify a known gene. That doesn't mean mm -hmm. that the gene is not there, right. it just means that we haven't identified that gene. And so I think it's for prostate cancer, it's really important to know your family history. If you have a first degree relative, mm -hmm. a father, a brother, or even a second or a grouping of second degree relatives like a, a niece or a nephew or a niece, excuse me, a nephew or an uncle who has prostate cancer, then I think that it's important to, to, to know that, that that increases your risk of having prostate cancer. So if men, is prostate cancer, I don't know why these questions come up, is it rare in men younger than 40? So it is rare. And in the old days, we used to think that it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely rare, and so I wouldn't think about it. But one of the things that we've learned in our new kind of studies is that it can happen in younger men as well. Mm -hmm. It's extremely rare, but extremely rare doesn't, doesn't mean that it's impossible. Right. And so I think this is a time where you have to look at your family history as well. Mm -hmm. And then when you start looking for prostate cancer, quote, screening for prostate mm -hmm. cancer really depends on your personal risk mm -hmm. and your family history and when your other family members develop prostate cancer. So it, if, for example, it is something that is inherited and it is something that runs in the family and it is something that you know that uh, not just your dad but your uncle and, and yeah. cousins uh, have actually had it, at what age should you then start screening for prostate so I think the way we think about it is the a good rule of thumb I use is 10 years earlier mm -hmm. than the uh, the youngest age that a family member has developed prostate cancer or at the age of 50. So if your family member developed, let's say your father developed prostate cancer at 70, that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you get screened at 60. Most men we, we recommend starting at age 50 to be, re to be screened. Mm 
But if there is a family member who has, who had it earlier than 50, then let's say they had it at 55, then we would recommend that maybe you think about it at 45. Those are the kind of things yeah. that we think about. So Dr. Kilo, does race and ethnicity play a role in this as well? It, it, it is in some ways. And so for unclear reasons, there's groupings of prostate cancer that seems to be more aggressive in, let's say, African-Americans. Mm -hmm. And that's unusual because if you go to West Africa, where the genes of African-Americans are very similar, the West African population doesn't seem to have that much prostate cancer. But the African-American population, the Caribbean-American mm -hmm. population, seems to have a much higher frequency, mm -hmm. and their prostate cancer is much more deadlier than the similar Caucasian population. And so I think it's important to recognize that there is ethnic differences mm -hmm. within prostate cancer and that the the prognosis or the aggressiveness of the prostate cancer in American and African Americans seems mm -hmm. to be much higher. But we don't know why. Not yet. Not yet. We don't we yeah. don't know We're yet. Working on it. Yes. I mean as with all cancers, I think that why is really the important. Mm -hmm. We know what's happening but we don't know why or how. And so I think how we beat or cure cancer mm -hmm. is how, when we find out that why. Mm -hmm. But you, you, okay, so you mentioned, you mentioned the Caribbean and so on. So yeah. where in the world is it most common? And it, so here in, in developed countries, okay. that seems to be it. And Western Europe and North America seems mm -hmm. to be over there. We're seeing less of it in developing countries. We don't see it as much. And is it, does it, is it because we're not screening as much? Okay. But I think even without, you, if you take that out of it, right. like if you're in a poor country where there's not a lot of screening, you're not going to discover and people right. will die of something else. Right. You know, if, if the average right. death rate is in the 50s, mm -hmm. then a lot of people are going to die without knowing they have prostate cancer because this is a cancer of the elderly for the right. most part. For the most part. But we still see the highest numbers being in the developed world, in Western and North America. In your experience and in your line of specialty, is it getting our men younger being diagnosed with prostate cancer? Are you seeing that at all? I'm seeing younger people being diagnosed in general throughout with all mm -hmm. things, and I can't explain it. I can't explain it. It's not just genetic. And I, I do think that this wave of cancers that we're seeing at a younger age mm -hmm. really has to do with some kind of environmental exposure that we're all sharing. Makes sense, especially if they're getting younger and younger, yep. and it's in a developed it world, is. absolutely. Signs and symptoms. Sometimes they say that there are no signs and symptoms for cancers, but are there signs and symptoms? You know, we, there are specific signs and symptoms that we look for for advanced cancer, such mm -hmm. as bone pain or other things. But for people who have um, prostate cancer, there's no specific signs and symptoms that we attribute to prostate cancer. But there are symptoms of an enlarged prostate where that could be a, a sign of you know mm -hmm. harboring prostate cancer. So people who have urinary frequency or trouble sleeping at night, that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you have prostate cancer. It's a sign that you have an enlarged prostate. One of the things that really we have to watch out for is if there is blood in your urine or blood in your sperm, that's really a sign that there's something abnormal and that should be evaluated quickly. Now, I know that uh, sometimes some symptoms that I've heard too might be weakness or numbness of the legs or feet. That's when the, one of the signs of an yeah. advanced cancer. So when you have cancer that has spread to the bones, mm -hmm. you could have pain as it because it can cause pain in the bones. Mm -hmm. You can have pain from fracture as it causes to the bones. But one of the most common places it likes to go to is in the spine. And the nerves that kind of enervate, that kind of help your body have strength and sensation, run through the spine. And if there's a tumor in the spine that's growing, it mm -hmm. could... It can cause difficulty. Absolutely. So it can cause sensory changes. You can have trouble feeling things or going mm -hmm. numb. Or you can have weakness in your arms or legs. And that's all a sign that there may be something going on in your in the bones in the spine. Absolutely. I know that with uh, prostate cancer and diagnosis, how how is it actually diagnosed? I mean, everyone talks about it. And yeah. I know for some reason men do cringe when you mention prostate exams. Yeah. They do cringe at the side of that. Um, can you talk a little bit about what is actually, how is it diagnosed and what does it take? So the, the diagnosis that we look for, or how we make the diagnosis of prostate cancer is first, it entails a, a prostate examination, which is we feel the prostate to see is it soft or is it hard, is there a nodule? And that gives us a sense. 
if we feel a really hard and firm prostate or a nodule on the prostate, that really tells us there's something abnormal in there, mm -hmm. that, that there may be prostate cancer within that, that we have to be careful. The diagnosis is really made by a combination of physical examination and a PSA. We check a blood test to see if that's abnormal. But the real diagnosis is made mm -hmm. from a biopsy. You need to have a biopsy to make the diagnosis. So that involves them going to the prostate and, and, and biopsying portions of the prostate and looking under the microscope to see if there's normal cells or cancerous cells to mm -hmm. make the diagnosis. So blood test doesn't tell it suggests it's cancer. Mm -hmm. Physical examination suggests that it's cancer. But to make the diagnosis, you need to have a prostate biopsy. Doctor, now that you're mentioning that, I would like to invite our viewers that at Illinois Masonic Medical Center on Saturday, November 7th of this year at Illinois Masonic. There will be a lecture both in English and in Spanish, two tracks, as well as free prostate screenings, both blood and exam, as well as a lecture on prevention. We are looking for the first 100 men who would like to register and take advantage of these free exams and take advantage of coming out to learn more about prostate and stay for the lecture. Uh, we do invite you to call at 773-296-7157. Reach us at our Hispano Care offices or you can call the 1-800 tone number at 1-844-414-7979. Uh, the Hispano Care number, again, local number is 773-296-7157 for Saturday, November 7th, this year at Advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center for a free prostate screenings as well as lecture. So we talked a little bit about the uh, diagnosis and how we go about that. And can you tell us the American Cancer Society plays obviously a large role in cancer in general, mm -hmm. but can you tell us what their recommendations are for early detection? So I think it's really important to recognize that the screening or early detection of prostate cancer is really controversial. I think what that means is that we're not sure that we should make a routine recommendation that every single male needs to have prostate cancer. Why that is, is that there are men who have prostate cancer who will have prostate cancer in their body and live and die of something else besides mm -hmm. their prostate cancer. This doesn't mean, though, people have taken this to mean that people shouldn't be screened. It's not what they're saying. It just means that everybody should go in with the understanding that when they're being screened, what that means, what are the benefits and what are the risks of being screened. And so the position of the American Cancer Society is just really to kind of have a patient be self-aware and have the knowledge base so they can make the decision to see if screening is appropriate for them. So when you go to your primary care physician's office, and that's typically where screening is being done, mm -hmm. you should go in there with the understanding that you're going to have a discussion with your primary care physician about what prostate cancer is and how it's diagnosed and what the tests that will be involved mm -hmm. and what are the risks and benefits of each of the tests. And so I think early detection of prostate cancer, like all cancers, is we're trying to think that if we detect it early and we treat it early and you can be cured early, we can have you live longer right. and save more people. Right. But what we don't want to do is put people through unnecessary testing mm -hmm. that they may not need in their mm -hmm. life. And so I think we've become much better than that. In the old days, we would indiscriminately just screen a lot of people. Right. But now we've learned that we, we have a discussion, and then we will take the answers that we get from that discussion or from that screening to see if that is uh, an appropriate thing for the patient in front of us. So it's a more personalized discussion is what we're asking. So, and that discussion should start with our primary care physician. I, I think that's the appropriate place for that right. to occur because that primary care physician knows you. Right. They know your other me medical conditions, and they should know your family history as well. Right. And so I think they can have an appropriate discussion based on what's, what's, uh, what's right for you. Right. So now let's say, doctor, that someone's come in. They've come in for their prostate screening, okay. and unfortunately it comes out to be positive. How is prostate cancer treated? Okay. And so, you know, the first thing that we try to figure out with prostate cancer when it's diagnosed, we try to stage it. We try to figure out, is it localized to the prostate or is it moved elsewhere? And the one thing I'll tell you is for the vast majority of people, prostate cancer has not spread. It's localized to the prostate. 
And so we take a look at your PSA. We take a look at something called the Gleason score, which in simple terms is how pretty or ugly the prostate cancer is. Mm -hmm. And then we take a look at your physical examination findings and the results of your imaging, if we've done any. And we come up with a stage and we come up with a risk stratification. That means, is this a very low risk prostate cancer? Mm -hmm. Is this a low-risk prostate cancer? Is this an intermediate-risk prostate cancer? Or is this a high-risk prostate cancer? Some prostate cancers that we term to be very low-risk or low-risk may not need treatment. Mm. The appropriate thing for those cancers mm -hmm. may be just aggressive, watchful waiting to see if they have changed at all. And so that will involve repeated physical examinations, repeated uh, PSAs, and maybe even repeated uh, biopsies down the road. But if there are cancers that have become more aggressive on watchful waiting, or if they are intermediate risk, or they're high risk, that means that they're at high risk of causing problems for you in your lifetime, then we mm -hmm. do really advocate treatment. And that treatment really is, for some men, surgery, mm -hmm. and for some people, radiation, mm -hmm. and some people, radiation and hormones. Mm -hmm. And so I think these are all the treatment modalities that are out there. But I think when it comes time to be treated, I think it's what's really important is that you hear your options from meeting a surgeon and meeting the radiation doctor, and then hearing all the options available to you and making the decision that it seems appropriate to you. And that's where a good primary care physician right. is helpful because you need somebody to be able to take all this data and say, well, this is, I think this is what they're trying to say. This is what they're trying to say. I think for you, this seems like a reasonable option. All right. Doctor, I... If you can give a patient recommendation, mm -hmm. suggestions, if you were giving yourself recommendations, suggestions, what would you tell a man in his 40s about prostate? A man in his 40s? Yeah, if he's 40s, 50s, start maybe uh, runs in the family. Absolutely. You just found this out. As if they were just diagnosed or they were they were thinking about being screened? They were thinking about being screened. I think that's the important thing I say is, as with all men, we are afraid of being screened. We are afraid of being of showing some form of weakness, it seems, to be screened about that. And so we have this tendency to put our head in the sand. Mm -hmm. Women, when they're screened for breast cancer, don't seem to have this fear as much as men seem to have, is what mm -hmm. I've found. Though they, they have, we all have similar fears. But for men, for some reason, they're afraid of the digital rectal examination. Mm -hmm. That's a fear that, that everybody jokes about, and that's mm -hmm. a common thing that, that even I'm afraid of as mm -hmm. a 40-ish year old man thinking about this. But what I can tell you is, is that I think it's really important to know what's going on in your body so you can make the decision that saves you. If when you're 40, you want to be 80. And you think that 40, you're indestructible, but the reality is you're not indestructible. <laughs> that things can go wrong at any point. And the things that we learn is that the earlier you can catch cancer, the better the chances that you can be cured and have a lower chance that the treatment causes you harm. Absolutely. So as a 40-year-old person, I say be empowered. Know about your health. Just the same way that you look to say, I want my blood pressure under good control. The same way I, you say, I want my cholesterol to be well. I want to exercise so I can be healthy. That's the same mentality you should have to being screened for prostate cancer, sure. being screened for colon cancer. Mm -hmm. Those are all the screening things that we kind of look at. Being screened for diabetes. Mm -hmm. These are all the things that, that can cause damage to your body if left unchecked. Absolutely. I do want to remind our viewers that with me today is Dr. Maria Akilu, and I do want to provide you with his contact information. Should you have any questions about today's show or you have questions regarding prostate screenings, any of that, you can reach Dr. Akilu at the Critical Cancer Center, and it's actually, you have a new location now. We do. You do. We and do. can you give us that new address? I'm sorry I don't have that on there. It's, so, it's 900. Nelson. It's on Nelson, on the other side of the hospital, exactly. at the Advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center. or And you can also call him at 773-296-7089. That's still the that same. Is correct number. Again, that number is 773-296-7089. And obviously, you can always call the American Cancer Society at 1-800-227-2345. And to remind our viewers that we do have that free cancer program that's taking place November 7th, Saturday, at Advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center. And that, too, is provided.
free of charge. And please, we are looking for registrants for the first 100 men. Seating is limited. And we'll provide some breakfast, have a talk. Two tracks, both in English and in Spanish, will be presented. Um, and the free screens to go along with it. Again, call his final care. You can reach us at 773-296-7157. So, doctor, I know, you know, we can sit here and we can talk about prevention, prevention, prevention. But what is it really going to take to get this lesson through? You know, unfortunately for some people, the first, the most, the thing that seems to put them is a family member that has died, died of prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. That, but if you're waiting for that, I think it's a little too late. I think the important thing to recognize is that cancer is a major problem in our society, and it's not going away. We've done a good job, a reasonable job. The people dying of cancer has lessened, but that's still a big issue. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that prostate cancer is very common. And once you get to a certain age, your chances of having prostate cancer are, are more than 50%. Men older than 75, we found that they have more than a 50% chance of having prostate cancer. Those numbers are huge. Mm -hmm. And so the chances are very high that you in your lifetime may have prostate cancer. The important thing to recognize is, as with all things, catch it early. Really, it is vital to catch it early. It is vital to understand what that is. Because you are empowered then. You make the decision that's right for you when you have made that decision. You've caught early, you have time to think about it. The worst case scenario is if it's advanced, you missed it, and you're forced into treatment, you're rushed into it, you lose power, you lose control. And so I, I, I strongly urge you, control your body. Know what's going on in your body, and don't be afraid to know what's going on. Very important. Thank you for that message. Our time here goes by very quickly, and I want to bring you back. I know there's so many other things we want to talk about. Okay. So I invite you back. Come back and be on Thank the show. You. And I invite our viewers to, you know, give us a call. If you have questions, please give us a call. That's why we're here. Prostate cancer diagnosis is a life-changing and can be mortal battle with overwhelming stress and devastating physical and emotional impact on family and on you. So the earlier prostate cancer is found to echo Dr. Akilu's words is better. So please give us a call. Join us at our lecture. That's why we're doing it. The better educated you are, the better we all are for it and family members. So on that note, on behalf of my colleagues at his final care at Advocate, Illinois Masonic Medical Center, Cancer Criticals Cancer Center at Masonic, and Dr. Yes. Akilu, thank you so much for being on the show today and for our viewers who are watching. Until next time, stay tuned. A lot more information coming your way. Until next time, have a good evening.